I'm going to show you some pictures now of different camps used to house either refugees or prisoners of war. And I want you to tell me where you think this camp is and when in history it was used. Uh, I want to say somewhere in Europe. I think that's Russia. Is it during the First World War maybe? 40s and the 1960s, um, somewhere in Europe. Revolution, sorry, the Russian Revolution, yes. Yeah, First World War Germany. This is a First World War prisoner of war camp and it's in the Cotswolds in England. What? No what? way. It was used to house enemy soldiers captured during combat. Really can't tell, I mean, perhaps J Japan? This one, so the one on the left kind of looks like England or like Europe, like Germany. The one on the right, I'm not really sure. Second World War? I think it was the US war with Korea? During World War II. I'm going to say France. Um, the Vietnam War. So this is the Second World War. It's a prisoner of war camp as well. And it's in Texas, in America. And it was also used to capture soldiers during combat. Whoa. It's difficult to tell, like, where, because it's, it's just a piece of land, really. I reckon this is somewhere in Africa. It's definitely a refugee crisis. I don't think a prisoner of war camp. Maybe, so I think, I'm thinking maybe somewhere in Asia. I'm thinking Middle East. Okay, that looks like somewhere in the Arab Spring, maybe somewhere like Yemen. Somewhere in Africa or the Middle East. I think recent. This could be uh, this, you know, uh, Syria um, with the rise of ISIS, Iraq kind of thing. Um, it kind of looks like when there was that earthquake in Haiti. 1980, 1990s. This is a Syrian refugee camp in Jordan and it was used between 2013 and 2015. Over 150,000 refugees lived here temporarily when fleeing the Syrian civil war. Seen too many camps like that on the news. This was in the condition in which they housed them in. Um, let's say Austria. Well, this is somewhere in history where they really didn't care for humans. See, this could be the 1980s Berlin Wall kind of um, situation. I, I agree war. with the time because I'd, I'd be very surprised if this was recent. I'll take a guess that it's during the World, world War Two. I hope it's not in the UK. It was during COVID and these were like ex-army barrack things and they were used to house um, people waiting asylum. So this is the Napier Barracks in Kent, currently used to process and temporarily house asylum seekers. No way. These barracks have been called unsafe by the High Court, but they're still being used <gasps> and will be used for the next four years. Disgusting. See, it's disgusting. Uh, that is absolutely disgusting. Are you sure this, 100%, this isn't right? Now we're going to look at some newspaper headlines about refugees. Which refugees do you think these refer to? And when do you think they were printed? So I, I think aliens <clears throat> has been used to describe migrants. I, th I, I would say both of the, those headlines are written within the last 10 years. How many more can we take? Yeah. That's definitely present. Just the, the use of the word aliens and it's kind of, kind of like, it was kind of new to migrants coming into these countries, so I'd say that would have been older. They both seem to have a, a really strong anti-migrant sentiment. Um, and we've seen a lot of that rhetoric in the last 10 years. But I would say that they're, they're referencing migrants from parts of Africa. Both of these are examples of Daily Mail headlines. The first article is from 1938, about German Jews fleeing Nazi persecution before the Second World War. Around 70,000 European Jews had been admitted to the UK before the outbreak of war in 1939, but the immigration process was purposefully designed to keep out the majority of applicants. British Jewish associations had half a million more case files for those who weren't allowed into the UK before the outbreak of war. Those that didn't manage to flee were subject to persecution and it's estimated that six million Jews were killed by the Nazis during the war. The second headlines are from 2015 about the Syrians fleeing the civil war in their country. The UK government pledged to resettle 20,000 Syrian refugees, a tiny amount compared to Germany, which has taken around 800,000 Syrian refugees. And facing the unfolding crisis in Afghanistan right now, the UK government has pledged to take 20,000 Afghan refugees in the long term, but only 5,000 in the first year. This works out at eight per constituency. Some MPs from the Conservatives' own party have said that this is not enough, 
then we should take at least 50,000 refugees, given the threat the Taliban poses to so many groups. It's clear that this government and parts of our media have a real problem with refugees and their rights, but it gets worse. Despite the unfolding crisis in Afghanistan, the government has committed to bringing in a new bill, which is called the Nationality and Borders Bill, which criminalises the act of claiming asylum, something which is currently protected by the Geneva Convention. The bill makes coming to the UK without permission a criminal offence. Caroline Lucas, the Green Party MP, used the example of a woman fleeing the Taliban with her children. If she travelled to the UK without prior permission, for example by crossing the channel in a small boat, she would be treated as a criminal if she made it to our shores, no matter how dangerous her situation was, or how dangerous it was for her to remain in her country. Absolutely not. I mean, the, the main focus should be on why these people are escaping these horrible conditions and that, you know, there should be efforts taken to help them get to where we are now and, and get to safety and, you know, so they can start to live something which resembles a normal life again. No, I don't think it's fair because it's, they're doing what they can and what's available to them. If they could do it in a safer manner, they would, um, who would want to take a boat that's so unsafe, especially with yeah. children and, you know, women and just a any person in general. It's not fair to judge them for the route they take because they're just doing what they can. I would still say that a, a large portion of, of this country still want to support refugees. I mean, when you see how many people are in need, now, like, well, I'm not saying we, we can support all of them, but eight people per constituency, that's a ridiculous number. First of all, I think the government needs to sort of welcome them with open arms because that, the government and the media has, have a big part to play on what people think. So to change people's attitudes, you have to deal with that first. If they're more open and welcoming, then so will the general public be. These people do want to change their lives, you know. They're not here to take away. A lot of them are happy to come here and contribute to the economy. Um, so that whole idea that they're here to leech off the state is complete nonsense. If you want to help us change the Nationality and Borders Bill, go to bestforbritain.org forward slash better democracy.